Different websites provide different kinds of value. Some content may be information that can be viewed and shared, while others provide helpful details to accomplish a task, such as making a purchase, finding a location, or making contact. If we want to ensure that our designs are usable, we should understand what our users will want to do, consume, or create. So when mobile apps came out, most of the mobile apps were, were for consuming. And by consuming, I mean like, you know, you're, you have a reader, so you're reading, you know, like a Flipboard, where you're reading a magazine style articles, or Instagram, or, you know, Facebook, you're still consuming a lot of information. Uh, where creation is concerned, very few apps do this. But then you have the apps where they take creation to another level where you are submitting a request for a quote on the go. And there's this like, you know, pages and pages of form fields. Now, when I'm on the go and I have this tiny screen and I have to fill out this like 20 field form, it's, it's terrible usability because it's, I'm frustrated that I have to fill out such a large form and such a small screen. So if you measure the failure rate on that form, you'll end up seeing that a lot of people bail on it because nobody wants to fill out a 20 field form on a small screen. Uh, so the, the approach should be that you should focus on doing one thing at a time. So I'm not saying like, hey, if you have a long form to fill out, you shouldn't give them one field at a time, but maybe you can chunk that down or group it down so that they are filling out that information or only the important information. And then later on, when they're on the desktop, they can fill out the rest of the information. By creation, you are eliminating a lot of the unnecessary stuff that goes on when you are creating on a desktop. And by consumption, you are, you know, you're consuming on the go, so you want to make sure that you take into account all the contextual information of the user. So if they are consuming a weather app, don't require them to fill out where they are, you know. You can get that information directly from the device. Or if they are looking for real estate around them, you can also get that information from the device and you can have them fill out some of the prerequisite information so they are not having to fill out that data over and over again that, hey, my requirements are this. When considering the type of content to feature on your site or mobiles, it's important to anticipate which users will access your site using a phone or tablet and why. Are their goals different from when they visit your site with a laptop? If your users are consuming content, you can bet that they're looking for the latest news and updates and perhaps want to search to find something specific. So don't bury content behind navigation or additional links. Put it front and center. Social apps like Twitter and Facebook serve up status updates on the first page users see, and other sites can learn from this. If you're in the business of providing latest news and updates, make sure you're getting to it as quickly as possible. If users need specific content, provide an easy-to-find and use search. If your users are creating content, it means they want to produce some text, take pictures or videos, and potentially refine that content before posting or sharing it. Content creation apps often present users with the first step of this process right off the bat, such as allowing users to take a picture or select one if the goal is to produce visual content. However, what if your users are walking around, in the car, or perhaps looking for your physical store? What could they possibly be looking for on your site? If you do have a store, clearly a locations finder can be a big help. Some sites will ask users to enter an address or location, but as we mentioned earlier, smarter apps will get the user's location through the device and provide an instant list, map, or perhaps even the directions to the nearest store. Smart shoppers have also begun using apps to check the prices of the things they want to buy. In fact, many users will visit one store to see the products in person and then use an app for a competitor to see if they can save money by going elsewhere. These apps have prioritized pricing information as well as the interface, allowing users to quickly scan products to search for them rather than have to type anything in. If you're a designer, you might be wondering 
Do I really need to build my portfolio so it can be viewed on the phone? Do people really look for designers this way? Well, to answer your question, consider this scenario. What would happen if your portfolio doesn't look good on a mobile? People considering your services want to know that you've considered the mobile angle. And if it doesn't look like you have, they're going to find someone else who has. Therefore, make sure your information is readily accessible and looks good, no matter what device your prospective clients use to find you.